So it's basically just a fancy pink lemonade, but it really is quite fancy. And as much as it's really refreshing, it's also um, kind of got enough going on that I feel like I could definitely sit on this for a little minute. Do you ever feel like you just need a break from alcohol? Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the stuff, but every good relationship needs a bit of space every now and again. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make three really easy but really delicious non-alcoholic cocktails. Just because you're not drinking doesn't mean you have to relegate yourself to the kids' table and only drink uninspiring soft drinks. You can absolutely still have drinks which are really complex and interesting. I'll be using some of the easy peasy homemade ingredients that I showed you how to make in my episode on syrups and so on, which you can find here if you missed it. But if you don't have time to make them ahead or you just can't be bothered, then I'll be giving you some simple substitutions to get a similar flavor profile as well. Who needs Aperol when you've got berries to play with? Obviously, a lot of people kind of tend to, with non-alcoholic drinks, just load them up with sweetness and sugar. And while that might play well with the five-year-old demographic, it doesn't really appeal to more grown-up palates. So making a syrup from something like fresh berries works really well because they actually have a natural tartness there as well as that kind of fruity sweetness. What I've also done in this syrup is layer in some spices. So um, we've got some cinnamon and some cloves, some star anise. And those kind of woody notes actually um, mimic the kind of backbone that you get in things like gin or even whiskey. So it just adds, again, that little bit more complexity and interest. Now, if you don't have time to make this syrup, then um, what you can do is just muddle some fresh raspberries, strawberries, whatever you have there into some sugar syrup. And a good way to add in those extra layers of spice is to um, use some Angostura bitters. It is alcoholic, but obviously you use it in such small quantities that it doesn't make the drink really much above 0% ABV at all. But if you're not comfortable with that, then you could try using ginger beer, like a nice um, kind of dry and spicy ginger beer instead of the soda water, just to add again that spice in there. But bear in mind, it will still be sweeter than soda water, so you can probably knock the sugar back a little bit there. One thing that I quite like doing often is a, a more low alcohol version. So especially if you've kind of got a long day of drinking planned, just using things which are not as boozy. Um, so you can spike this with something like some uh, vermouth or some sherry, and they both work really well and are much less boozy than using spirits in there. As for the garnish, I'm always a massive advocate for using fresh herbs, especially something like this drink, which doesn't really have heaps going on on the nose without that. Um, so I'm using thyme because it works well with the woody spices that I've got in the syrup. But you could obviously use something like mint or sage uh, would also be um, really lovely and aromatic in there too. First, we're gonna get our garnish ready. So I'm just gonna slice up a little strawberry because that's what I happen to have. Then we're gonna grab our nice frosty glass out of the freezer. And then super simple, just 30 mils of fresh lemon juice and 30 mils of your berry syrup. And then we're just gonna go about 90 mils or so of soda water. Give that a little stir. And then we're gonna add a couple of little slices of strawberry in there because we want them to be suspended through the drink. So we'll add a little few in before some ice and then a little bit more after that. So we'll get a little sprig of thyme and pop that in nice and neatly as a little bunch. And then we'll just put our straw in right beside that so you'll get all that lovely aroma when you're drinking. And there we have your summer berry spritz. So the timing of this episode is not necessarily a coincidence. Um, here in Australia, I'm not sure if it's worldwide, there is a thing called Dry July. Um, and it's basically kind of a, a charitable endeavor where people will pledge to give up alcohol for the month. Um, and then also people will kind of sponsor them, donate to charity. So if it is something that like you feel like you're needing a little bit of a break anyway, um, and that sounds like something you'd like to get involved in, then we have dropped the link to that below. Homemade iced tea is such a good grown-up non-alcoholic option and that's because of something called tannins. Um, so that's what gives, uh, wine is kind of the most obvious one, um, but also things like aged spirits, so whiskey and things. Um, it gives it that kind of slightly drying feeling that you get in your mouth, um, which provides a lot of structure. And tea has that as well. So that's why I really enjoy using tea to just bring that in when I'm playing with drinks without alcohol. Another way of doing it is actually just to soak 
some tea leaves in sugar syrup for sort of a day or two um, and that way it infuses and leaches all of that out but then all you'd have to do is add a little bit of lemon juice and some soda water and that's a really easy kind of lazy iced tea that you can just have in the fridge for whenever. Today we're actually going to be using sort of fresh brewed tea and then the oleosaccharum that I made in our syrups video. Uh, it literally means oil sugar and that's when you just pop some granulated sugar on top of uh, citrus zest or citrus skins and it leaches out all the oils and gets really kind of perfumed. If you don't have that then don't stress, you can just use regular sugar syrup but you will want to add a little bit of citrus juice in there as well, just a squeeze or two of lemon. And as for the tea, I'm going for Earl Grey because I like that it's quite perfumed and lifted um, and again just think it works really nicely here uh, to give kind of quite a, a delicate sort of flavour. Uh, but of course if you kind of prefer something a bit ballsier than just your regular English breakfast or um, you could even try it with something like chamomile uh, if you want to keep it decaf and alcohol free. So I'm just going to give a nice grapefruit twist on this one. Then we're going to go about 100 mils of tea. This is cold so obviously if it's hot then be careful and don't put it into a chilled glass because it will shatter on you. Then we're just going to do a couple of bar spoons of our oleosaccharum. Um, I did do mine with a little bit of pink peppercorn in there as well which I think will work nicely with the floral notes in the tea. And then a couple of dashes of peach bitters. Then we're just going to add in some ice. Just have to top this up a little bit. I didn't factor in the fact that my um, lovely big ice cubes here at Bomba won't fit right down to the bottom of this rather narrow glass. So a little bit more tea in there. And then we just get a nice big wedge of mint. And then last but not least, we're just going to take our um, grapefruit wedge and give it a little spritz over the top here. Zesty iced tea. And while I'm just sipping on my iced tea here, I'd like to take a moment to thank um, some people who have just joined up to our Patreon. Thank you very much to Jason, Drew, Chris, Boss, and also to Fabiola for upgrading. Cheers to you guys. So next up we have the pineapple punch and before I get any pedants in the comments, I know it's not technically a punch um, but I couldn't really resist the alliteration when I was writing this script. The star of the show here is our pineapple shrub. So a shrub has both uh, sugar added to the fruit but also vinegar. So you've got that acid component in there and we took it another level and added in some ginger and allspice as well. If you don't have time to do that um, then what you would just want to do is break it down into the individual components. So I would just use sort of 60 mils of pineapple juice and then do um, 15 mils of lime juice and then 15 mils of sugar syrup. The other thing that I do really like using in non-alcoholic drinks is grapefruit juice. It's got that real kind of pithy um, tart edge to it which again provides a bit of sort of driving structure um, and just makes things a little bit more interesting than uh, some other fruit juices I tend to find. This drink we are going to shake as well uh, and that just adds in a little bit of fluffy texture um, and kind of more interesting mouthfeel. Now not to be the devil on your shoulder but this is also delicious if you want to spike it with some tequila or rum. Uh, so for this one it's kind of however you feel, it's meant to be sort of tropical holiday vibes. Uh, so I'm going to do a nice big grapefruit wedge and then we'll use some pineapple fronds as well for the garnish. Then into our shaker tin we're going to go with 90 mils of pineapple shrub. Then we'll go 90 mils of grapefruit juice. I tend to like to be quite sort of generous with portion sizes for non-alcoholic uh, drinks so that you don't maybe feel like you have to kind of keep purchasing them if you want to hang out with your friends. You can kind of get one and sit on it for a little minute. Just going to pop a couple of little cubes at the bottom here. Pop your tins together, make sure they're nice and straight so they seal and then shake as hard as you can. Obviously always with um, your homemade ingredients it's good to have a little taste and adjust. Some pineapples are going to be sweeter than others and so on. A couple of pineapple fronds and your grapefruit wedge and a straw. Pineapple punch. 
So there you have three different, but most importantly, delicious and interesting non-alcoholic cocktails. Now, of course, it does really help to have a little bit of time um, to prepare some homemade ingredients in advance, because that way you can layer in those other kind of spices and other flavors, which really help to just elevate it past your sort of run-of-the-mill um, non-alcoholic drink. If you don't reckon that you'll have time to do that, then I would recommend investing in a good quality syrup like Orja or Falernum, um, something kind of as close to homemade as you can find in the shops. And that way you'll be able to have some other spices and fun flavors coming in there, but then just be able to throw together something delicious whenever you feel like it. Three delicious non-alcoholic drinks. So now you know.